Since 2009, the federal minimum wage has remained stagnant at $7.25 an hour. That means someone working 40 hours a week at minimum wage makes just $15,000 a year before taxes. For the last nine years, there has been a growing movement to increase the minimum wage to $15. And now the Democrats are on the precipice of achieving that goal as part of Congress's COVID relief bill. But while it would require some political maneuvering through what's known as the reconciliation process, allowing Democrats to pass the bill by a simple majority, comments from President Biden are causing concerns, especially among progressives, that this White House is not willing to at least put up a fight to see this through right now. You also want to raise the minimum wage to $15. Is that something you would be willing to negotiate on in order to get Republican support? Well, apparently that's not going to occur because of the rules of the United States Senate. So you're saying the minimum wage won't be in this? My guess is it will not be in it. But I do think that we should have a minimum wage stand by itself, $15 an hour. Joining me now is Bishop William Barber, co-chair of the Poor People's Campaign. Bishop Barber, happy Moral Monday. Thank you for being here. Let's dig into this. The The argument is, is obvious, you know, for raising the minimum wage to $15 an hour if you're a worker. Um, on the other end of that argument are some Democrats who worry that it will cost jobs. Let, let me tell you what the Congressional Budget Office came out. And they, 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 they report, the CBO reported that passing the minimum wage of $15 would increase the deficit. Um, that it would lift 900,000 Americans out of poverty, which is a great thing, but that it might that it would cost 1.4 million jobs by 2025 because of things like automation, like businesses like, you know, the burger places will just automate their industries and not hire humans. What is your response yeah. to that? Yeah, thank you, Joy, for that, because the CBO, there's some problems with that. First of all, I'm glad they said it would call, lift people out of poverty. And today, SEIU Fight for 15, One Fair Wage, the Poor People's Campaign, and people like Pamela, who you showed, are saying, look, we have to have this. Now, what they're basing that on, though, is a 55-year-old poverty threshold that is far too low. The truth of the matter is it will lift millions of people out of, out of low wages. Uh, and poverty. 62 million people work for less than a living wage. Uh, Six million workers, tip workers, who make $2.10 an hour plus tip, will be lifted out of that. 45% of black people will be impacted, black workers, black workers, poor, low-wage workers, uh, and the majority will be white workers from West Virginia to Mississippi. But here's the other thing. You have to add to this not only uh, the raising living wage, but the health care and the infrastructure. We know that for every $1 increase in the minimum wage, it adds $1.2 uh, to the economy, according to the IPS, the Institute for Policy Studies, which then creates jobs and creates uh, um, billions of dollars into the economy. So we like the CBO, but there are economists that are saying that number is based on the old poverty line, and that's all they're looking at. They're not looking at low-wage workers who make less than 15, 62 million of them before uh, COVID, and 6 million mm -hmm. tip workers. Tip workers, and you know, tipping people is a result is is a, a legacy of slavery. The reality is, you cannot talk about racial equity. You cannot talk about geographical equity. You cannot talk about gender equity. You can talk about women's equity. You cannot talk about equity from Alabama to Appalachia unless we have this fifteen dollar an hour wage. Now it has to happen, and it will lift and the economy. Bottom. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.